On It's Alana with 570 Press, back again with another Wednesday night music chat. Today, I'm talking with Fortune Child, and I only recently uh, became a fan of theirs because it was sent to me in an email. Shout out to Tom of Tide Publicity for sending that my way. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing awesome. Doing good. Hell yeah. So let, let's let's start with the basics. Let's go back to the beginning. How did you guys become a band? Ooh, uh, Christian, why don't you take that, dude? So, Buddy, man, when was this? It's about over a year ago now. Buddy sent a message to me, I think on Facebook. I was like, hey, man, I saw you singing a Bill Withers song with your band at the time in this blues club. And that was like two years prior to the time that he messaged me. And he was like, I think you would be great for this project I'm working on. It's original, you know, rock and roll stuff. I really think that you would fit. And I was like, okay, cool, right on. You know, and I had, I had no idea who he was. I never, you know, I think I might have heard his name a couple times, but I just wasn't really sure, you know, of him at the point. So right. then in person, he's like, let's jam. Let's like, we'll get the space. We'll go there. We'll meet up. We'll play. And from like the first five seconds of him playing, I was like, holy smoke. So then I feel, figured out that he was one of the best guitar players I'd ever seen or gotten to jam with. Oh my God. Um, so it was, it was immediate kind of that little lightning in a bottle moment. And uh, we kind of ran with it from there, um, you know, and ended up, you know, John Ward hopped on. And so it just, uh, it was, it was pretty, uh, I don't know, it was pretty quick the way that it all kind of unfurled. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is super cool. And, you know, I, I always think, you know, when things happen really quick like that, it's either very good or it's, you know, something that you're kind of like, oh my God, how did this happen that quick? But I feel like for you guys, it was a very, very good thing because you can, it definitely shines through in your music that you guys have a lot of talent. So. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. So let's talk a little <laughs> bit about, um, your upcoming LP close to the sun and the lead off single far, which by the way, has been in my rotation permanently for the last three weeks. And I'm not ashamed to say so. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so yeah, we, we, um, you know, like, uh, Christian said, we, we got together, we started writing and, um, it was just like instantaneous. Like it was just like immediate gratification as far as like a musician to like get together and just like pump out these songs, you know? And um, we had a couple more than what was going to be on the record. Um, we wanted to settle with eight, you know, because it's not like your standard 10 and it's not like, like, uh, you know, like 20. So we got eight songs down and um, the title track, uh, you know, was, like originally going to be like a different name you know but there's a lyric in there you know and uh christian says you know like uh you know like some like won't get you close to the sun and so like we're just like oh that's cool so we went and uh just it all happened really like live you know like we uh laid it down live at retrophonics in san augustine beach and um just a really quick process i mean like, we recorded the album in, in like three days you know and uh it was just insane, you know, as far it was really, it was really cool that, you know, that that song in particular has the only overdub on it as far as yeah. guitar work, you know? And um, so it's like this really tight, you know, melodic rock and roll thing. And then it like drifts into this kind of like psychedelic kind of um, almost kind of Pink Floyd-ish, you know, kind of thing, you know, it comes out really strong, you know? So that's uh, one of my favorites. Right. And are you influenced by Pink Floyd? Because I, I can hear the Pink Floyd elements in that. And it's interesting that you tracked. Now, was it just that specific song or was it the whole album was tracked live? Because you you, you literally can't tell that it's live. And I think that that is so cool. <laughs> That's a like huge that, compliment. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. You, you cannot tell. Like I literally, I am an audio engineer and I could not even tell, even with it like coming through my monitors, I could not tell it was live. So that is amazing right yeah thank you for that we we yeah. definitely went for that you know like we we kind of capture everything in the moment you know so we we really wanted to have that hold true for the album so we went in the same room we all tracked i had a scratch vocal that's the only thing that we kind of did go over obviously because we can't put a condenser in the middle of the room of the band you know <laughs> but 
but it uh it i mean we stuck to takes that were clean with everybody on them so it was uh i i think that we accomplished what we wanted you know and the sound was there for sure and especially that studio shout out jim devito i mean he's got just one of the craziest collections of vintage incredible analog gear you know the the only digital thing in that entire studio is his computer so i mean it's we we ended up using you know just some of the the best gear we could have gotten our hands on and for the sound we were going for it was perfect you know it was it was a perfect fit right right for sure and i think that you know to so to speak the naked eye a lot of people don't really understand that having the best gear possible that you can have at and that said, it makes all the difference. And it, and you, and you can hear it. You can hear the difference that it makes. Very true. Oh yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So, who are some big influences for you guys? I, I, you know, heard some psychedelics, some hard rock, some, you know, punky type vibes. So. Yeah. Um, um, oh yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. So I mean as far as just myself as a guitar player you know like i i started playing bluegrass you know when i was like nine so like i just had like my spectrum is like everything from you know like country to um blues really was a it was really kind of you know turned me on um blues rock you know like british kind of you know like the band humble pie and everyone you know like from clapton to to hendrix you know um you know, and as far as like the psychedelic stuff, you know, like obviously, you know, you got your, you know, your Pink Floyds and your, you know, Iron Butterflies and stuff and um, stuff like that, that, you know, it really gets thrown in there, you know, like Christian's voice to me, you know, he's a, he's definitely a soul and R&B singer that's singing blues and rock and roll, you know, so just as far as the writing style, I mean, like, you know, and like I was born in 99 you know so like a chorus like there's like a little bit of that kind of grunge thing going on that you know um just from like what i was kind of growing up with so you know it's just it's just really authentic you know kind of stuff um everything you can name just it, it's like gumbo i mean there's just everything that you can possibly pull into it you know Love that. yeah so that's you know and that's how i view it you know i've never had gumbo because i am very very northern <laughs> Um, but I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I've always wanted to try it because like, you know, Scooby Doo on Zombie Island, you know, that was where I first yeah. learned about it. So <laughs> yeah. I always wanted to try it, but never found anybody who knows how to make it or even knows what it is because <laughs> why we're in Pennsylvania. That's why. Uh, fair but, enough. Fair enough. but we have pierogies. So <laughs> Ooh, that's something good. I've that's heard a, of. So yeah. that's a, yeah. that's a good that's a good change. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so Christian, who do you think are some influences for you? Um, I kind of grew up listening and playing a ton of different music. Um, as a kid, like my dad would play anything from like, we go to the skate park and listen to like gang of four, you know, or like, uh, bad brains and stuff like that, like punk. And then I would go, we'd ride in the Jeep and I'd be listening to like brush fire fairy tales, like Jack Johnson stuff. And then oh, yeah. my mom listened to a wide variety too. She loved like matchbox 20. She also was like big into musical theater. You know, my mom's side of the family was all into that stuff. So I kind of was a hodgepodge from the beginning. And then when I got into high school, I really fell in love. Well, middle school and high school, I really fell in love with rock and roll. And Zeppelin was like my number one. They're still like my, you know, one of my top bands ever. Um, yeah. And, and so that that kind of that sound really kind of rang out to me. Um, and then I really loved Floyd, like the psychedelic stuff, you know, and then when you get into like CCR, you get into Sabbath, you get into, the, get into, you know, all that kind of stuff. Humble Pie, too. Like, I'm I'm actually, unfortunately, just now really starting to respect and appreciate Humble Pie, like in the last like two years. So um, I just I don't. I don't know why I never, never got into it for some reason, but yeah, that's, that's definitely, definitely my cup of tea. The rock and roll stuff did it for me. And then, you know, still back then, listen to jazz, listen to bluegrass, listen to, you know, anything I could get my hands on. I was listening to, but definitely always went back to the rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you know, I can, I can, I can relate to that. You know, I, I was also raised on a, a very odd hodgepodge, um, 
my dad is into like classic rock and country and you throw a little bit of like Prince and Michael Jackson and super tramp in there. And then my mom, she's rap and metal and nowhere in between. Whoa. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was such a contrast. So like we'd be like in the car and they would, they would play this radio station that would play like all seventies and eighties. And then she'd turn it and then it would be run DMC. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like six years old listening to King of Rock. So there's that. <laughs> um, so what would you explain your songwriting process as being like? Because I know that a lot of bands, they vary. And sometimes, you know, bands, the singer will have lyrics, but not really have a structure as to where to go from there. Or the guitarist will have a riff, et cetera, et cetera. Mm, basically... Like, I, you know, as far as, like, uh, the initial nucleus of a song, um, it, you know, it's always kind of started with, like, a riff of mine. You know, like, I have an idea, uh, basically just a hook, you know, um, whether that's being the chorus or the, you know, it could be an intro, it could be a verse. I mean, you know, like, it could be a bridge, you know, and you just don't know. I mean, it just got this really catchy, you know, kind of either like a chord progression or like a, you know, like a riff, you know. And um, John and uh, Christian will come in and and um, just sort of kind of like, you know, fine tune this, you know, and kind of refine this. And, you know, and like uh, Christian will be like, oh, OK, well, you know, like try this for an intro and stuff. So it's it's really just there's no like one person. I mean, like the, as far as like. I mean, you know, like I'm the guitar player, like I'll come up with like a riff and the song will literally write itself, you know, and like when you have like musicians that can, you know, do that, you know, like make your idea better than what it is. That's, you know, always been a dream of mine, you know, so um, the songwriting process is very like just spontaneous, you know, like Christian will write lyrics right on the spot. Um, my riffs get inspired, I mean, like I'm inspired by just all kinds of stuff, you know, and like my the cool thing about the songwriting process for us is like um my idea will you know pretty much it, it kind of come up first for the riff by the time it gets through john and christian it's an entirely different idea than what i planned in the first place and it's you know nine times out of ten better so it's just really spontaneous and on the spot just lighting in a bottle totally yeah, yeah. i'd have to there. It's, it's a very collaborative effort um and it's like the most, my number one adjective for our process is just efficient and yes. fast. Like I, we, when we get together and write, it's, I mean, we usually write at rehearsal anyway, but we'll finish a song and start a song every rehearsal. Like that's how it goes. So we're just, it's, Buddy is like a lick machine. He's always got a, a, a great idea after great idea after great idea. So then we'll normally he'll play like three or four and we'll be like, okay, that's the one let's let's stick on that one and then i'll just kind of do this i'm like play it over play it over it because i'm just going to write i kind of write based on how i feel how i hear it you know i'm not very good at i was never like a, a one of those you know vocalists or lyricists that could like sit at home and was poetic you know i wish i could be i love those guys but like i just never had that knack i was really good at just like honing in on what the music made me feel in that moment like and it depended on like my day whatever you know any emotions i was feeling beforehand too so i don't know i feel like it's a really it's a really special representation of like ourselves in that moment too like it's not like preemptive everybody's bringing something to the table and then it, it puts itself together it's very much like our brains collaboratively collaboratively in that moment creating music so it's a, it's pretty special and it's something that i've never experienced in any other band so we we're definitely pretty proud of that and we uh you know we hold ourselves pretty you know pretty highly for that hell yeah you know that's something that's something that you don't you don't find in every band like that's like a true like musical chemistry connection type jazz thing you know there's like there's technical words for it but i usually just call it like you know this is like how it's supposed to be this is our connection or speaking of connection you can still hear me right because my, my thing is buffering i think it's it's coming into that a little bit yeah it's it's it, you sound like a robot <laughs> <laughs> you know like oh, no. but, okay. yeah, you're there, <laughs> okay okay yeah um, so I think we can get through this. How did you 
Yeah, I think so. I think so. Five minutes. Five minutes. That's it. Okay. Um, so individually, how did you both get into music? Christian, I know you mentioned that your family has a musical theater background, which is also my background. Um, so <laughs> I, I always appreciate when I have a fellow, you know, musical theater person on the podcast because you know it's close to my heart. Um, but like what what made you guys decide that this was something that you wanted to do, you know, permanently? What was that? Is that did you ask when we wanted to do this permanently? What do you think made you get into music? Um, for me, it was just growing up around it. I think like being around music so much is kind of what made me want to do it so badly. And like seeing my parents, like how much they love music, especially like, I mean, my mom loved music. I think equally like my dad did, but my dad really like showed it, you know, like he would always show me new music. Oh, oh, it's on the audio. Okay. Yeah. It, it was just like, he would show us or show me just like anything that I, you know, wanted to hear. And it was like from the Zeppelin stuff I was talking about, like bad brains getting a four. And then you go into like missing persons. And then we go into like Stevie Stiletto, like that kind of stuff. But then you'd go back and you'd be listening to like Elvis Costello. And like, there was such a variety of, of music and inspiration for me and the creativity, you know, I don't know. There was, there was such like a, an unknowing feeling, but it was like exciting. You know, I wanted to know how all of it was happening. Like, I wanted to know how they made those sounds, how they, you know, how they even did it literally like i had no idea you know back then when you're a kid you're like how are they doing that it's a guitar yeah. but like what you know so there was so much it, it was like a a playground really you know like there was there was no rhyme or reason to it in my brain and i was like that's what i want to do like it just seems like so much fun so i don't know i mean i was singing for a really long time as a kid like i've been singing my whole life played drums the second longest picked up guitar in high school pick up bass now and all that you know so it was it was pretty much, I think, genetically in me that, you know, I was going to find my way to music in some way. But, um, you know, I think to the to where it has come, you know, definitely started way back then when I like really that spark was created. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I can totally, totally appreciate that and relate to that. You know, I feel like, you know, it's one of those things where you know, I feel like there's some people that they discover music and they're casual, casual listeners. And there's other people that discover music and they decide that that's what they want to do. And that's, that's kind of what happened with me too. You know, like my parents were always playing VH1 classic or MTV classic music videos. And I was like, whoa, what did that guy rip in the guitar? That's so cool. I want to do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. By the totally. way, is my, is my connection good now? I I have my hotspot on, and I had to move my hotspot. So. <laughs> oh, you're all good. You're all good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, buddy, how about you? Um. Well, there was a time where, growing up, I was I was infatuated with music. Just uh, you know, my dad had um just like huge like stereo like the old school like bose you know stereo system like the huge knob on it you know and like like all these like different like you know systems and like speakers and and just tons and tons of like cds right and like i was like i must have been like not even like you know five or six and just like you know um looking at like all these cds and these cases and stuff and um I mean, like, I just didn't have any idea, like, you know, I mean, you're like, you know, you're like a kid, you don't know, like, what about style or about, like, anything, and, you know, like, he taught me literally how to, like, change the CD and, like, which, like, button to push and shit, and, like, so I was just listening, I was, like, like, I remember listening to the band Cream for the first time when I was, like, a little kid, and I'm just going, this is just just being infatuated with those sounds that, like, that mix of, like, that bluesy kind of thing with, like, this like melodic weird you know like harmony kind of you know stuff and and just really listening to anything i could get my hands on you know like i was nine when i really started playing i started playing drums actually in actual fact i started playing drums and i was like when i was like six or seven you know and just kind of learning kind of how to you know i mean you know do a four four and stuff and um i was getting pretty into it and then i you know i told my dad that i wanted to be out front <laughs> 
and I guess like out front in front of my like practice shed. Um, so I got so he like he went up and got this like little like sixty dollar guitar called an Esteban from this like pawn shop, and um, I, I just I completely just <laughs> ran with it like I was just so infatuated with um bluegrass music I said like like in my elementary school there was a guy named Uncle John like everyone called him Uncle John all the kids and there was like a guitar club and it was you know based around like bluegrass music like really simple kind of like folky you know kind of like almost like nursery rhymes you know like for kids you know but they're like old like bluegrass you know songs and so I got really deep into bluegrass and then um you know just you know like hearing basically it's you know like the like there's a sound in your head that you get turned on to and you know whether that be a guitar it could be whatever you know Mm -hmm. and you just go man i i need to learn how to do like i just want to um i love that i don't know what that is i don't know how like i you you don't kind of understand like what it is but you like you're chasing it you know like for me it was like you know like old like just started out with like the basic kind of like you know like the eric clapton licks you know like that bluesy kind of stuff and you know i'm just like that's what i want to do you know and you just keep doing that and 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 that never stops it's like a line of like you know it's like constantly having a sound in your head that you're like trying to achieve you know and along the way you start playing you get better you know then you want to go out to a jam then you meet people you know then you find out hey these people are good you know and it's just like it just carries you through this whole process of you know like you're constantly in search of something you know and it's in your soul you love it so much that you just it just it takes over your life you know and that's and that's all it is Mm -hmm. that's all that's all it is you know yeah yeah it's one of those things where like it consumes you but it consumes you in a good way absolutely yeah 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 i i completely agree and i completely relate to that also that is so awesome that your elementary school literally had a guitar club my elementary school didn't have anything that cool we had like we had like some weird like community club that like two people showed up to so i mean (laughs) that's something right but (laughs) so like actually actually how that began so like here's like a little quick story was i my mother passed away when i was like eight right and i was getting rides to school from this girl and her mother um Caitlin I was like seven and um in order to get a ride from her I would have to stay for this like guitar club that she was in right in the school and there's like like five or six kids you know like playing these like little like kitty guitars and like learning how to play like a c chord you know and I would I remember doing it for like three days one week and I would just sit like at the round table like in the corner because I didn't because it, it, it wasn't my thing right like I was just waiting on like a ride you know because like I rode with her mom you know and, like so we had to wait on her so and then one day um the the instructor um like looked at me I'll never forget this he looked over at me and you know and my mom just died I was having a hard time you know and he's like there's one in the corner if you want to go pick it up and like right then I felt so included I felt like I had a friend I had, like I felt like I was finally accomplishing something right and and like that was really insane you know so if it wasn't for that guitar club and if it wasn't for you know bluegrass music and getting a ride from that little girl and her mother diane you know i would have never picked up a guitar you know so that kind of circumstance led me to that you know um i probably would have delved in it one day you know anyway but that really you know like that yeah there's a lot of you know deep stuff behind me starting you know mm-hmm. so it's it's just crazy what it can lead to you know just like this yeah yeah for yeah. sure for sure yeah. that's that's seriously it's, it's a moving story and i'm i'm very sorry to hear about your mom yeah um, you know but you know she loved music too i mean like yeah it, it was all about she loved the eagles you know and just and and you know just a lot of singer songwriter stuff you know jackson brown you know so yeah it, yeah, so it was it's just inevitable that I just started, you know, doing something, you know, with it. So, yeah, but I love it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So my next question is, how did you come up with the name Fortune Child? Because it is a very catchy name. And when I first saw the name Fortune Child, I instantly thought of CCR. Really? 
Yes, he's his fortunate son. Exa oh yeah, oh, I, man, I love that song. Mm -hmm. Um, well, um, you know, there's a couple sort of, you know, kind yeah, of. Uh, I think. <laughs> yeah, there's a, yeah. Basically, you know, it was just a um. You know, it's kind of like a universe. So I, you know, I came up with the name, and 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 um, I wanted a very, you know, like universal and like positive name to, you know, basically kind of like a neutral, but uplifting kind of name, you know, to go along with this like really raw, like hard blues rock and roll kind of thing, you know, like, you know, like blast of the past kind of, you know, rock and roll revival kind of thing, you know, for that market that we're in, you know, like that, you know, and, um, right. you know, so, so like, I wanted like a, like, not like an oxymoron kind of thing, but I wanted, you know, just like a, like, like, if you think of the band journey, right, like that name is so beautiful. It's so, it's so neutral. It's like a, you know, it's like, you know, the music is, you know, like taking you on a ride, you know, and, and like fortune child, you know, it can be, you know, like everyone in this world is a fortune child, you know, like, the, I mean, like everyone has a purpose, everyone has a soul, everyone has something they love, you know, so that was kind of the thing behind it, you know. Nice. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a name, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, you know, and I like the two word kind of thing, you know, like, you know, deep purple, black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, you know, fortune child, you know, kind of thing. So that's, you know, <clears throat> you know, it's the same yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I agree with like the two word thing, like some, you know, one word bands are okay, but I feel like if you go above three, then it's probably, you know, <laughs> should be reconsidered but right. teach their own teach their own um so anything else that you guys have what can we expect from you guys in the future um anything that you would like to say if anybody hasn't heard of you what can they expect etc um we're definitely booking a lot of shows uh this month's looking really good for us i'm not sure when everybody will hear it but we'll be you know tomorrow we're gonna be in jacksonville we got some shows coming up in gainesville some events uh, coming down the pipeline that we're really excited for that are going to be throughout Florida, possibly out of the state. So definitely follow us on Facebook at Fortune Child Music, uh, Instagram, Fortune Child Music, all that. Um, we, yeah. You know, post our shows, get announcements. We've got merch for sale on our band camp. Uh, the album's out there. You can get physical copies on CD, T-shirts. Uh, you know, we're just trying to kind of get the name out there. We're, we're fairly new, you know, within that year mark. So we're just trying to kind of get the word out, get some people out to the shows and, you know, get everybody to turn on to the music. Cause that's what really matters. Hell yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. You guys got to come up here to PA. Well, not, not right now. We just had snow yesterday. We had a literal snow. <laughs> snow. I've oh. never seen snow. We well, got to get first, no, it, We have to go there. Time for everything. We yeah. Have, funny, yeah. We sold an album last night to somebody in Pittsburgh. I got to ship it tomorrow. And he told me, uh, he told me to get in touch, send me a promoter and everything. I can't remember his name though, but wow. they, uh, they gotta come up here. <laughs> I feel like we'll be getting up there at some point. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We'd love to see it. And let's, let's hope that, you know, you can at least see snow once. If not, if not, <laughs> I mean, you know, there, there, there's, there's pictures of snow. We have ski mountains <laughs> up here that they, you, you know, they like, they make the snow. So. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, River Street sure. Jazz Cafe. Yes, somebody just said um, a local venue in our area is the River Street Jazz Cafe. So I will hit you guys up with that contact if you guys would be. Oh, yeah. Thank you do. so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on and talking with me. This has been a lot of fun and it was really great talking with you guys tonight. Absolutely. Oh, thank thank you. you. Yeah, of course. You guys have a good night. Good night. Thank you.